Greetings, dear friends, fellow programmers, and those aspiring to be. Did you know that JavaScript has basically revolutionized the world of web development? And if you are ready to revolutionize your coding skills, I would highly recommend you to stick around in this video because we will be talking about async capabilities of JavaScript programming language. And if you master these well, you will definitely feel like your coding capabilities and powers are on a whole new level. First things first, let us talk about the difference between synchronous and asynchronous code. You can think about synchronous code like you entering a coffee shop and then you stay in line and you wait your turn to get to a counter and then order your cup of coffee. And that way you wait and you wait and you wait and one customer at a time gets served and the queue gets smaller and smaller all until you are the person who is next in line ready to make their order. And that is not very efficient because only one customer can be served at a time. So basically that is how synchronous coding works like. Now when it comes to asynchronous code, if we take the same reference for a coffee shop, it is basically you walking to the aisle and making your order, saying to barista that you would like a certain type of coffee, and then going back to the table, sitting down and reading a book. And when your coffee is ready, a barista would call out your name, you would know that your coffee is ready to be served, you would walk to a counter, pick up your coffee and head back to your table. That way, even though one cup of coffee can be made at a time, you are not standing in line doing nothing while waiting for your cup of coffee. You were able to walk to a table and do whatever you like until the coffee was ready. It is exactly the same with asynchronous programming in JavaScript, because JavaScript is a single-threaded programming language. So, in reality, it can only do one thing at a time. Even though it has very smart mechanisms that are delegating the work and sharing it and pushing it into different places, so it would be able to make an illusion of performing multiple things at the same time. Just imagine having an application that has a very, very complex piece of code that needs to be executed synchronously and it takes like 15 seconds to execute that function. And a person using the application has just triggered that function and it starts executing. And for those 15 seconds, a person can only sit down and stare at their frozen screen because nothing will be working. Your JavaScript engine is not appliant. It's not listening to events. It's not able to do anything. It is hyper-focused on solving the stuff it needs to solve in that function. And basically that would be a terrible user experience. So that is exactly where asynchronous JavaScript jumps to the rescue. And here we are. We are looking at an example that I have prepared specifically to show you how synchronous code would look like. So when we take a look at this code, we have First, a console log that states start. Then we have a for statement, which is going to print i three times, basically from zero to two. And after that, in the end, we have another console log that is going to log end into our console. So what is the main goal of this code that I wanted to show you is the fact that when this starts executing, when compiler enters this block of code right here, it will not be able to do anything else. It will be completely blocked by executing for loop and printing i onto our console. I mean, this is only three iterations, so it's like no time to execute it, but this could be millions of executions that can take a while to execute. So this is a synchronous line, 
So when we run this, we will see that we should get start, then 012, and then end printed out. And that is exactly what we got here, as you can see. So this was how synchronous code looks like. Now, it is time to discuss another example, which is not more complicated than the first one, but inside of it, we are utilizing async capabilities of JavaScript. So to do that, we are printing start, then we are reaching the set timeout function, which if you were following along on this video series and you were watching the previous set of videos dedicated to call stack, event loop, event queue, and things of those sorts, you will know that when set timeout gets pushed to the call stack, it is just going to do the following. It is going to pull out this callback that needs to be executed, wait for 2000 milliseconds, and then push this callback onto event queue to wait for event loop, to pick it up and push it onto call stack to actually execute the contents of this callback, which is going to be this console log line. So basically, when I were to run this code, we would get start printed out, then this set timeout would be just handled and nothing would be printed because 2000 milliseconds need to pass, then this right here will be pushed to event queue, and then after that is done and the call stack is empty, event loop would execute this right here. So while that is going on, we are going to receive this line, this console log for the end, pushed to the call stack and printed out. So we will get start, end, and then this two seconds later. So let's see, and yeah, you saw start, end, then we waited for a while, and then this last message was printed, which is exactly what we were expecting. We can see that our execution did not stop for two seconds before we printed the end, so our engine was not stuck after we started counting for 2000 milliseconds. It was still able to listen to events, do stuff, execute. And then when this was done counting, then it would handle it properly and print out the message. After seeing this, we can say and make a conclusion that a synchronous JavaScript can concurrently execute multiple tasks without blocking the main thread, which is, of course, when utilized properly, going to skyrocket the performance of our application, improve its user experience because the screen will not be frozen for end users, and also it will allow us to be able to handle many different things at the same time. And when we put all of this together, I'm sure that you will agree with me on the point that this asynchronous capability is a game changer in JavaScript for us developers, of course, and for end users as well. So basically it's great. And I highly recommend you to stick around because we are just getting started with video series dedicated just to asynchronous JavaScript, because I want you to really master it well. If you are still not sold on the concept of asynchronous JavaScript and everything that it offers us, then I have prepared another way to try to persuade you into utilizing it. I'm going to display right now and explain what are the pros and cons of utilizing synchronous code and also asynchronous code. So let's do that. First up is synchronous code. When it comes to pros, it is definitely easier to debug and follow because it's like you just go from the top to bottom and everything needs to be executed in that exact order. There are no jumpings, there are no waitings, there is no breaking the path of execution, basically. And also, when you think about it, we will have a predictable order of execution, which is also a nice thing to have and it will make our lives easier. But now, let us talk about cons of using synchronous code in JavaScript. So first, we will be blocking the main thread, which means that when some heavy operation needs to be executed, the entire application will be frozen. It will have to wait for that operation to finish and then it will continue executing. In the process of the execution, 
there is nothing we can do with our application. It is going to be 100% frozen without us being able to do anything about it. And also, if we are using synchronous code, it will for sure be very ineffective for IO operations. So when you think about it, if we are listening for users' inputs, for example, them clicking a mouse button or scrolling or typing something or anything like that, we will not be able to handle those events because, for example, we are executing something and our JavaScript is completely frozen because it needs to focus on the calculations that are taking place right now. So it has no capabilities to also listen to events that are taking place at that same time. Now, let us talk about asynchronous code. First, we are getting started with pros, as usual. So the first one, it is non-blocking. This means that we can handle multiple tasks at the same time without blocking the main thread and basically allow it to keep listening and keep doing everything as it's supposed to to basically keep being responsive even when it is performing some actions because all the tasks are not relying on each other i mean they can rely but you are the person defining to what you want to be dependent on to be executed and on what you do not want to be then we have better resource utilization when you think about it it makes perfect sense because our cpu will not be completely blocked by some very heavy duty action that needs to be executed it will still be able to listen to events and address everything that is happening in the application so basically we are going to put less load and share it better and of course we have to mention the fact that user experience is going to be way better as i mentioned the screen will not be frozen when some heavy action gets executed, which is a must nowadays. Now, let us talk about cons of using asynchronous code, because nothing is perfect in this world, and so is the case with asynchronous code. So, the first con is basically asynchronous code is much more complex to write, maintain, debug, extend, understand in general. So that's a con definitely. Then we have debugging difficulties because everything is executed asynchronously and you do not have to have the same order of execution every time you try to run your code. That is causing issues when you try to debug it and make things difficult to figure out what is the cause of issues and things of those sorts. And finally, timing and sequencing issues. So when you're working with asynchronous code, it is way more difficult to have good and firm grasp on all the timing concepts within your application. So multiple things are happening at the same time. You have to be worried about multiple things, make sure that everything is tracked properly, so this can cause issues. And now that we are familiar with all this stuff, it is time to put it in action. Let's say you want to build a weather app. And this app is going to communicate with an external API to fetch the data for weather in your town. With asynchronous JavaScript code, you would be able to send those requests to external API and allow your application to be completely responsive while you are waiting for those responses to be received. You do not have to block anything and everything will be working as expected even though you are waiting for data to be received. On the other hand, if we were using synchronous code, our application would have to freeze completely when we make a request and wait and be frozen all until we receive the response from the external API service, which is definitely not a great user experience. I mean, who likes staring at a screen that is completely frozen and does nothing? Nobody, not me at least. Let us jump to our ID and see it in action, see what I'm talking about. And here we are. We have a console log that is stating that we are fetching weather data. And then we are using fetch function from JavaScript, where we need to provide an actual URL, which I do not have because this is just an example. And then what we are having is we are waiting for our response from this fetch statement 
And when we receive it, we will enter this then block right here. And then we will convert our response into JSON. And then when that is done, we will log the data that was received by this response to JSON function. And if anything goes wrong in this process right here, we will enter this block right here and log an error. It is that simple. We just make a flow that is going to be executed and JavaScript does everything else for us. And this code we are seeing right now is completely asynchronous. It doesn't wait and doesn't block the main thread at all. In a nutshell, async JavaScript is great because it is making sure that we as developers are getting most out of our applications because we do not want it to be dead while it's waiting for something to be received or something to be calculated. That is a poor practice. So asynchronous JavaScript prevents that from being an issue. And by doing that, it paves the way for a smoother and better user experience in general. So next time you're building something in JavaScript, I think you should definitely utilize asynchronous code inside of it. I mean, practice makes it all better. So is the case with asynchronous JavaScript. So if you would like to learn more, I highly recommend you to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications because we are just getting started with video series dedicated to asynchronous JavaScript. And we will be extending on this topic as time goes on and we collect more and more data about JavaScript and its async capabilities. And in the end, I would like to thank you for watching and wish you an amazing day. Happy coding!